10. On 1st October, our country will take another step in its evolution to continue to address the needs of the workers when the minimum livable wage of $1,131 per month or $6.52 per hour will become law. The stability and strength of our nation is very dependent on the well-being of the vulnerable in our midst. As a socially conscious government, we remain faithful to the needs of people, ensuring that there is dignity in work and that workers can have a dignified existence by being able to take care of themselves and their families. Nine. In terms of the grizzly playing field, again, this is a project that is about 80% complete. Uh, we have the bleachers and the stands um, being worked on right now and we're expecting the roofing to come in at some point at the end or towards the middle of October. Uh, so that we can finally have the covering and we're certainly hoping to host events at the Grizzly Mini Stadium. An announcement will be made on the naming of that stadium and to some of the other facilities that we will be having for our young athletes at the Grizzly Mini Stadium. Eight. The government of St. Lucia is making significant strides towards fulfilling its commitment to repurpose and retrofit the former George Charles Secondary School into a state-of-the-art youth services center for children, adolescents and youth in need of care and protection. We really want to have an appreciation of exactly what the structure will look like when, when it is finished. We, look, we really look forward to the completion of this building and the department will do everything possible to ensure that the funding and the logistics are put in place so that our children, our young people, will get a better a place of refuge, a better place. Seven. Team St. Lucia for the first Global Robotics Challenge left the island this week for Athens, Greece to represent the country in an Olympics of a different kind. The all-girls team and their robot were unveiled ahead of their trip to Greece. All of us have, have had some experience with scientific endeavors in the past, whether that be with coding or building, putting things together, doing science subjects at school. And for us, this was a chance for us to really see how it can all be put together into something that we may not initially expect the opportunity to arise here in St. Lucia. So that's something that for us is a pretty cool deal. Six. The ongoing efforts to combat chronic illnesses in St. Lucia took a significant step forward with the hosting of a capacity building workshop as part of the capacity building project for the prevention and control of metabolic chronic diseases. The two-day workshop, which attracted healthcare professionals from across the country, focused on strengthening the nation's ability to tackle chronic metabolic diseases such as diabetes and hypertension. So we are doing systematic thinking and guideline directed medical therapy. So everything that is being taught is following the HEARTS guidelines for hypertension, the CAFA guidelines for diabetes, and the KDIGO guidelines for chronic kidney disease. Five. It is an honor to speak to you today in observance of International Day of Older Persons. This year, we focus on the tremendous impact of older people in our St. Lucian society. Their wisdom, resilience, and experience have helped us to become a nation of excellence in many areas of endeavor. May we continue to learn from their wisdom and may their legacy guide us forward in a more compassionate and resilient world. Four. In observance of Breast Cancer Awareness Month 2024, the Ministry of Health has decided to place special focus on the most prevalent type of breast cancer in country and ensure that women, men, and those who are at risk, adolescent girls and their families, are empowered to perform regular breast screening and access the health services within their communities. Three. I relish every opportunity to engage and commend those who are the backbone of our education system, our educators, our teachers. As we observe World Teachers Day, let us salute the teachers of our country. And while I totally agree that our teachers should be recognized every day, it is significant that an entire week is set aside to honor them for their immeasurable work and their contributions to the development of our society. Two.
the National Community Foundation has been in existence for 22 years. Wonderful years. It's all <laughs> One. A family owned business, and we have been in CMOS for more than 20 years. But under the brand Martelli, it's been about four to five years, and we have now started doing the powdered CMOS. We have seven different flavors, and we basically try to cater to everybody's needs. Um, it helps with the time efficiency so that persons are able to get the CMOS health benefits that they would um, in less time, basically. So oh, it's a great opportunity, um, advertisement, and um, it really helps promote my work, get, uh, get, let people um, get to know about what I produce. Because as you can see, the very wonderful um, souvenirs, gift items, which actually depicts St. Lucia. Oh, it's very exciting. Uh, we're hoping, we've always tried to reach the tourism market and we think that's a good step to get in there. 